Hey everybody, here's Christian and this is Pico8 Hero. And today we're going to do some debugging. We are programming our our, our breakout clone. And we managed last time around to do some crazy functions to make uh, make this create this wall of bricks. This is really looking really nice. But now we have uh, having some troubles here because look, um, first of all, there's two bugs. There's two important bugs. Um, one of them, I, uh, see, now it just flew through two bricks. Maybe I'm going to do like a replay uh, when I edit this video. It flew through two bricks. It just didn't reflect at all because it reflected from one brick, but then it re reflected again from the other br brick. So it ended up not reflecting at all. It just flew through the brick bricks. Like here as well. It just bounced in a very different direction. Another problem is that if you drive your pedal in the ball, it gets stuck. It's very easy to drive the pedal in the ball. Right. Okay. That's good. Well, that's bad, but we're gonna fix this. Mm. First, let me address the the pad the um, the brick collision thing. So this is here. And it makes sense. We iterate through multiple bricks and it can happen. Can I start paint? Can I do this? Can I start a really quick a paint? I can. I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, it's creating weird effects when I do this. Let me see. Ah, better. Okay. So it makes sense if you think about this. The way we do this is every turn first of all let me draw the so we have a brick here right we have another brick right next to it right right <laughs> i always to make the same mistakes i'm doomed to repeat my mistakes right so there's a ball and flies like this this is the first frame and in a second frame it's 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 it hits something like this right and so it wants to draw the ball here, but instead what it does, it, it checks um, box number one and we realize, okay, there is a collision though. So we cannot draw, draw it here. We, we cannot continue flying this direction. We, we want to now fly in this direction or something. And I'm not exactly sure how it would deflect. It's exactly at the corner, sadly. <laughs> but let's say it deflects like this, right? Okay, but then it continues the loop and it checks if there's collision between the second um, box and it, there is a second collision, but it doesn't remember that we already had a collision uh, this 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 uh, on this frame, so it says like, oh we just collided so let us deflect, but it's already deflected so it ends up deflecting back in the wrong direction so that's how it behaves wrongly, so we have to just um, spell out perhaps what we want to achieve here. What we want to achieve is we still in this situation, we still want to have like collision with both bricks. We still want both bricks to disappear. I think it would be unfair if, if just one brick collided. But we want our ball to reflect just from one of them. We want at any given point the ball to just reflect from at any given frame, the ball to just reflect from one brick at any given point. Easy. Let us go in an update game function. Let us create local brick hit, something like this, brick hit. And then when we do the next loop, when we're checking if the ball hits the bricks, we're going to go brick hit equals false. We haven't hit the brick at this point. And if there is a deflection here, we're going to go brick hit equals true. So it now remembers when there was a brick hit on this frame. And now we're going to have to kind of check. We want everything else to happen, right? Do we want everything? Yeah, we want to have the points for sure. Uh, but we, want to we want, don't want to have the deflection. Um, we actually want to have the, the sound effect even. Uh, because we want to have maybe like a double sound effect effect where it's like when it hits. Um, when it hits two bricks at the same time. So I'm going to just wrap everything. It's not, not beautiful, but I'm just going to do it. If brick hit, then end. So this entire thing where it deflects, that's something that we're only going to deal with if there is an, if there was no brick hit. 
if not brick hit, not brick hit. Right. So our big function uh, that we had there is not even executed if there was already a, a, a deflection from uh, another brick in this turn. So if we run this, let me see, let me pay attention to some of the, it's a bit s silly that um, the way the ball starts is a bit un inconvenient for what we're going to try to achieve. Waiting for that double brick. Oh, that was weird. That that was weird. What did happen there? That didn't look right. That was okay. Hmm. Not sure. Oh. We might actually not achieve our thing. Let me look the, at the code real, real quick. Hmm. Not sure if we did what we wanted to do. Ah, yes. Hmm. See, we're resetting the brick hit at each frame. We want to do it before the for next loop. Uh, I mean, in, we are resetting each loop. We want to do before we st even start with the loop, not inside the loop. It, we it was wrong. I I ma make a mistake. Let me see how this works now. Set this. I haven't seen anything yet. It was okay. Oh, that was good. It, it, it hit two things at the same time and it reflected correctly. Yes, all of these are good. So far, so good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that, there we go. It hits two bricks at the same time. Both bricks disappeared, but it reflected. Good. So, bug one fixed. Bug two is a bit of an issue because, again, collision detection is a tricky thing. The problem that we're having right now is we're deflecting the ball correctly, but if the player is moving the pad really quickly, um, we're not actually moving the ball anywhere. We're not making sure that the ball no longer collides with the pad. Mm. So it's possible to get the ball stuck inside the pad. To solve this problem, what we can do is we can make sure if the pad if the ball collides with the top of the pad to make sure that it it's moved upwards so it doesn't so next turn and no matter what happens it it it's, it never no, no longer collides with the with the with a um, with a pad let me sh see where this is where are we doing the collision with a pad there it is so this is our collision with the pad now this is a bit of a problem um Again, it's kind of like this kind of polishing stuff. So let me tr add this little detail and see if this already maybe helps. So if there's an Y deflection, now we have to be careful here. Yeah, it, it can only hit the ball from the top. It, like it, you cannot have a situation where the ball is coming from the bottom and hits the, bat, um, the pad from the bottom anymore because the um, the 
lower edge of the screen is no longer deflecting the ball. So the ball will never hit the, the pad from the bottom anyway. So if there is a deflection in the Y direction, we make sure that the ball starts above the pad. Ball X, next, actually next X equals, no, next Y equals pad underscore Y plus minus um, ball underscore R. Is that right? It should be right. Let me try this. Mm. Still got a little bit stuck, but it's better now. Seems to be better now. It's not as, as easy anymore. Hmm. There's still a, a double hit when I hit it at the at the right speed. So at least it's no longer stuck inside the ball. Oh, one thing that we can do, of course, is we can... Let me try this again. Let me experiment a little bit with this. And no, this was good, this was good. Yeah, yeah, I kind of saved the ball here. There was a double, double reflection here. But maybe that's kind of like like a cool, um, like a cool mechanic that we can keep around. Okay, but whatever. Just to, to make sure, when there's a X deflection, so the ball hits the pedal either from the left or right side, we have to check if. Um, so I want to now reset the ball position if there's an X deflection. So that means the ball hits the side of the pedal. I want to reset the position of the ball on the corresponding edge of the pedal. Now we kind of have to figure out which edge uh, it hit. So we're gonna have to check the position of the, of, the, of the ball. So if next X is smaller, you know what, let me go with ball X. Th this should be clearer here. Ball X is smaller than let's say pad x and instead of like because pad x is the left edge of the pad let's go with the center of the pad plus pad w divided by two uh, we can leave it like this because it first divides and then adds then then it means we have to set it on the left edge of the pad else we're going to set it on the right edge of the pad so we're going to go next x equals uh, pad x plus, so the right edge of the pad is like this, plus, of course, the, the diameter of the ball, like this, oops. And then we're going to set it to this this if statement we're going to set it to the left side of the pad so it's going to be pad x minus ball there the radius of the ball so now we're just resetting the position of the ball when it hits the pedal we move it outside of the pedal so we are sure there's no collision next turn of course if the pedal is still moving there might be if the pedal is faster than a ball it might catch up with the ball and it might be still caught up in, the, in this thing but at least we're a little bit a little bit safer there. I'm gonna s try to break the, the game now. Ah, oh, there was still two. Yeah, so we can still achieve it because the pedal is, is really fast. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, there was good. Rip. What we could do later on to get it really nice and um, robust collisions is to also think about yeah 
So one thing I can do, so one thing that can happen now, of course, I haven't thought about this, is that if the ball was about to fall down and you swoop in with a paddle, the ball is about to leave the screen or the bottom, but you swoop in with a paddle, it does a collision and it resets the, the ball at top because that's what we do it here, right? So we can just make sure that this doesn't happen. Uh, this would work like this. So here, just to make sure what I mean, uh, I'm gonna use my paint again. Because this is, this is again, this is like the kind of like polishing that makes um, collision detection really tedious. Um, and you kind of have to do this because each collision detection has its own kind of like difficulties. Each game has like the, its own difficulties. I just wanna, I just wanna go. I just wanna, I didn't want, to, I didn't want it red. I just want it, how do I make it not red? Okay, yes, 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 yes. Um, ah, paint, I swear, I have to, I have to increase my paint skills. My paint skills have to be, have to get better. Why is it not filled? I don't understand. Did I pick the wrong one? Ah, there we go. Okay. So if we have a pad, let, this is our pad, let's say this is our pad. Right, this is our pad, right? No, I'm not gonna do this mistake again, okay. So let's say there is our ball. Uh, yeah, this is our ball. Like, right, right, it was moving away. It was already on its way out. It was moving this direction. But then on the next turn, on the next frame, you manage to very quickly move the pedal right, like here. So it registers a collision. And I'm not exactly sure what our deflection function says in this case, but I think it would say like, oh, let's deflect it, um, deflect it in the y direction. And our function that we just wrote there made me says like, oh, there is a collision between the, the ball and the pad. Let's better reset the ball on the top of the pad. So it then it would it would put the ball here, right? So it kind of like I saved the ball here. Might be actually a cool intentional mechanic because you don't see this happening. Um, um, but uh, just to make sure, I will prevent this for now. And the way to prevent it is to make sure that if the last position was underneath the, the top of the Uh, of the top top, uh, top edge of the pedal, then it, I'm going to reset the ball at the bottom of the pedal. So let me see. There we go. If um, ball y is is greater, so ball y is the position of the ball at the last frame, not this frame where the collision took place, but before the collision took place. So if the ball already dipped below the top surface of the of the pad, then else and then we're gonna not reset the the ball on the top of the pad, but below the pad. So pad y. Uh, plus pad a height plus ball r. Let me see. There's still the double whammy here, and I would might have to actually do like a video analysis to see exactly what is going on here. Ah, but see, we tried to do this, but it now deflected on the, uh, it moved the ball on the down. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So we can still sometimes pull it off, but. For the most time, yeah, okay. You have to be more precise now. That was good. Okay, 
so before we end this episode, I wanted to write down some thoughts, some targets, because right now we are starting to get into like really nitty gritty details. And I want to make sure that we have like our goal, what we want to achieve, kind of like we have it in, in our mind, what we're trying to achieve in general in this, in this, um, in this entire playthrough or in this tutorial, let's say playthrough. That's not playthrough, it's a tutorial. So goals. Oh, there's a nice ball at the G. Oh, I should have used this one. That's so nice. Goals. So things that we want to achieve here. First of all, the next thing I want to do is sticky paddle. Um, that refers to the fact that in most Arkanoid games, you start with a ball at the paddle and you have to press a button to launch the ball into space. So that's something I want at, at certainly have. Second thing I want to do is um, how do I could like velocity no um, angle control. So I want to do a version of the game or at least a tweak a little bit of the deflection stuff where it depending on how you deflect it changes angle. There's two versions where we can do this, either using uh, looking at where exactly it hit the um, pedal on, on which part of the pedal was hit by the ball and the other version is uh, to take into account the velocity of the pedal that it had when it hit the ball so you can kind of like give it a curve ball so to speak um, there's two versions here we're gonna see which one go goes works better three is gonna is levels so in the real arcanoid for sure you had this thing where uh, you would when you clear a stage, there will be a second stage, and that stage would look differently. The, the layout of the bricks would be different. And if we have levels, then we kind of also have to have different bricks. I want to have different bricks. So there's like a brick that has to be hit twice, or maybe a br brick that explodes or something, something like this. Uh, maybe before we have different bricks. So maybe that's something that we do can do before here. I'm not gonna I'm gonna really renumber them eventually. Let me just call, go call it zero. So event, uh, also something I want to do is is um, combos. So something that's very satisfying with breakout is where you hit multiple things be before you you come back down to the pedal when you hit multiple bricks and you know jump around there and 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 you know, get the ball inside some cavity and it jumps around and hits multiple bricks. That's very satisfying. You want to reward players extra for this. So I want to have a combo where it, it gives you more points and you kind of like um, have a combo counter running. And it, that's something that is very valuable that you're trying to encourage players to do. So combos, levels, different bricks. Um, juiciness. I want to add more juiciness. Oops. Oops. Why is it H? Oh, okay. Um, this means particles and screen shake. These are two very, very simple things that we, I think we absolutely need to have. And then finally, uh, I guess eight or something, is it eight? It's seven. I want to have a high score. Maybe another thing that we need to add when we talk about different bricks, we might add, again, we have to renumber this in a second here, power-ups. It would be nice if um, there are certain types of bricks that leave power-ups, that where it's like this little thing is coming down, you have to pick it up. And if you pick it up, something cool happens, we have to think about different power-ups uh, and program in. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this because uh, with the power-ups you can spend a lot of time dealing with the power-ups. So I just wanna make you sure that it's like something that's, that we can um, do something very simple, maybe like four power-ups or something that we can program very quickly. For example, a simple power-up to do would be a power-up where your pedal becomes sticky. So the, when the ball hits the pedal, it sticks to the pedal and then you can launch it somewhere else. Okay, so this is kind of like our, our roadmap of, of what we are going to do in this in this series. These are the eight things I want still want to do in my game. And we're going to see how this continues on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye. Safe. -bye.